All right, as you can see, we're looking at the vacuum tube oscilloscope again. So let's just quickly recap where we are before I got slightly distracted and didn't work on this for about a year. So in the last video, we rebuilt, or in the last couple of videos, we rebuilt the whole thing. We added this multiplier here. We added the deflection circuitry here and here. And we added this power supply that is now regulated, has a resistor divider down here. And the next thing we wanted to look at was how to use this horizontal deflection board here um, and connect it to trigger to the trigger circuitry. And what this does is it basically produces a sawtooth wave that slowly scans the beam across like this and then just returns it abruptly. And in combination with the other part of the of the deflection circuitry, that's going to do this movement and um, it's going to be controlled by the input signal, we get sort of a waveform, but right? we're just slowly moving the dot on the screen and the magnitude of the waveform at the time is going to give us the vertical deflection. So that's what we are going to do in this and maybe the next video. Let's see how we get through. I talked about this in the last video about creating the trigger circuitry, creating the sawtooth wave is relatively hard, especially if you're trying to do it with triodes or pentodes alone. So enter the Firetron. This um, tube doesn't only have a relatively cool name that derives from what people in the 20s thought, uh, what people in ancient Greece would call a current gate, or voltage gate, but I think more more aptly current gate. Um, but it's also really useful for creating the sort of waveform we want, and that is uh, a sort of. So this is a gas-filled tube, and we'll look at the symbol and the circuitry now. So if you look at this basic symbol, it looks a lot like a regular triode, but with a weird dot on it. That dot indicates the gas filling. And it behaves quite differently from a triode. The, this tube, if you put a voltage on here, between the anode and the cathode, that is above the striking or firing voltage, and this grid is just at cathode potential, it will fire and there will be a gas discharge in here that will allow relatively large amounts of current to flow. What you can do though is you can bias this grid negatively in respect to the cathode and then this won't fire until you bring up the voltage on here at which point the same thing will happen. You'll get the uh, gas discharge. So what you can do is if you connect capacitor between here and the power supply like this and we'll have some sort of resistor here you can make yourself an oscillator. If you have this grid just tied to ground or whatever. This capacitor will charge up via this resistor until it reaches this striking voltage and then the discharge will start. Discharge this capacitor to below the voltage where the tube can sustain the actual discharge and then it will stop conducting. Capacitor will charge up again until it reaches that point. And if we draw this in terms of a waveform, 
that will look a little like this have our voltage here and we have time here and this will look like this voltage will slowly rise until tube fires suddenly go down to below the uh, voltage where this can be sustained they will just slowly charge up again and this way we get the sawtooth that we wanted. One issue with this is if we just have a free running oscillator like that, we need to synchronize the motion of the beam on the face of the CRT with the incoming waveform. Because if we don't have that synchronized, then the picture on the CRT will wander to the left or right because if we if this is our sawtooth that's sort of moving the beam here and this is the sine the sort of sine wave we want to measure just as an example and this is not synchronized then this travel across the screen will start I'll just refocus the camera here. We'll start at a different point in in this um, uh, wave here every time, and therefore we can't get a clear image of of this because the first time it will show us this bit, but then the second time it goes round it will show us this bit. And so we'll get a superposition of all of these waves. And that will, on the screen, look sort of like this, if it's fast enough. It will just get a garbled together signal. So what we need to do is to synchronize this to the input signal. And that's what we can use this gate for. If we bias this, negatively enough so that the tube will not free run it will only run if we put a signal into here then every time our input will use a sine wave here as an example every time our input reaches that threshold the tube will fire and therefore will get a sine wave, uh, a triangle wave, that is synchronized to this. And it could be, this could be much longer than one period. The whole point with this is that it sort of starts at the same time every time it runs. And therefore, we'll get the same portion of the wave every time on the screen. So, how do we do this with this tube? Right, let's look at this crude circuit diagram of a test circuit that I built. So, this is basically just taking the idea that we just developed into an actual circuit. So, what this does is, we've got our power supply coming in here, and the negative side of the power supply here. And this is divided by voltage divider into two voltages. The higher voltage, this R1 is a lot bigger than R2, about 10 times, is going, so this is the ground point for the cathode. And because the uh, tube I use has an additional grid here, this is also, also tied to ground. So this is the cathode here cathode voltage and the major part of this voltage about 90% is between this point here where the cathode is connected and this grid and here where this anode resistor R3 is connected and this is as we just discussed just charging up our capacitor C1 here and this is connected to the anode here so the second resistor down here 
provides us with a negative voltage in respect to the cathode. And this is tapped off by a potentiometer drawn here and goes to this grid. So we can bias this to just about the point where the tube doesn't fire anymore. What we can do then is we can couple in our signal via this capacitor down here and that will make the tube fire. And we can couple out the produced uh, saw tube via this capacitor here. So I actually built this circuit up on an actual breadboard. Actually power this up, we should probably talk about the components on this board. So in the middle, obviously, the tube. We've got the power supply with the two resistors here that divide our voltage. We've got the potentiometer that taps off the bias voltage for the grid here. This is going to the grid. This is our coupling capacitor that couples the voltage in from the signal. And we've got a potentiometer down here that will allow us to um, vary the voltage of the signal that we'll put in here because this might be too high. And then we've got another coupling capacitor here that will allow us to look at the signal. This is the anode resistor here and then there's two more connections for the filament that sit under this timing capacitor here. Here is the test circuit hooked up to power. As you can see running it on about 180 volts and our grid 1 voltage in respect is all in respect to the cathode it's at the moment it's biased a bit about minus 5 volts with respect to the cathode the total available voltage that we had that we have for biasing is about minus 40 volts which is uh, quite a lot it's actually way more than we need. So if I hook the probe to just behind the anode resistor, we can see we're having stable 180 volts of DC here. If I turn it to AC, you'll see there's no AC on it at the moment because the tube is not firing at all. It's just in a non-conductive state. That's why we have the same voltage that we have here on the input, also on um, the anode of the tube. But if I turn this potentiometer here to the point where we're not biasing it enough negatively, so it will just free run, you can see we get a voltage here. And this is just the... Uh, a uh, difference between the topmost part and the bottommost part of the sine wave, uh, the sawtooth, I think. So if I turn this back, you'll see the AC will go away again. So what I'll do next is I'll connect this to the signal generator here, and I'll also hook the oscilloscope to the input and output capacitors. All right. I've got the signal generator hooked in with these two leads and I've got the oscilloscope connected to the input and the to the output and the input. And as you can see up here, we are getting a sawtooth that is synchronized to the input sine wave. The sawtooth starts at exactly the same point in uh, on the waveform every time and we can actually vary this with this potentiometer here if I set it higher the trigger point will move up higher on the waveform because we need more voltage differential to actually fire the tube if I turn it down you see that the point moves downward So I call this a success. Second thing that we can do is I can turn up the frequency on the signal generator here. And 
as you can see from the picture up here, it still gives the same results. Although it's now only triggering every second um, wave, um, every second period, I think it's called. So this is working exactly like we want it to work. And the subject of the next video will be how do we integrate this sort of circuitry into the oscilloscope and how do we solve problems that will um, und undoubtedly arrive when we try doing that. So yeah, I'll see you around.